and uh, I couldn't tell you the town, but it's below Stettin somewhere, where we finally got off of the train, and, and then they marched us a whole mile or two to our prison camp, which was Stalag Luft 4. And uh, uh, when I got there, there was only about 600, there was a brand new prison camp, there was only about 600 people. And I think there was only two, we were in, we were, there was only two barracks of us at that time, but then they started coming in fast from then on. See, there's four compounds in a prison camp, and we were A logger, there's A, B, C, and D logger. And uh, they were pretty well set up by then, although we didn't have Red Cross parcels, and all we got was uh, GI rations, which was very inadequate. We get like, you get a quarter of a loaf of brown bread a day, and, uh, and then you'd get uh, ersatz, uh, what was the ersatz now? You get dehydrated sauerkraut, in it, which is about like old used chewing tobacco, really. Brown and dark, and very bad taste. Now and then you get a good cabbage or a leek soup, but very poor rations. And then, uh, oh, yeah. But uh, anyhow, then the, there was one I ran into one kid in there that had been on our in our group in our squadron. I knew him very well, Tom Dumas, and uh, he had when he bailed out. He would tell me he had hit a tree about 50 feet up. The chute collapsed. He came all the way down and he's paralyzed from the waist down. And at that time, they didn't have any hospital facilities in there yet. And, I used to go and go take care of him. He had no control over his bowels or anything, you know. And I used to go and wash his clothes out for him and all that. And, and uh, he was he was a good natured guy and all that. But anyhow, he was one of them. Eventually, got repatriated long, long just for Christmas time, luckily. But uh, they warned, you know, at that time it was quite informal. It was summer and we jump out of our barracks windows and uh, the Germans put out a rule, no more jumping out the windows, you will be shot. And one day right up, the next room up above ours, why a guy jumped out and I, I went out and I was looking, they had shot him right through one side of the chest and out the other. And he, and so he, he paid for jumping out the window. That was the end of the jumping out the windows. And why were you guys jumping out the window? <coughs> just, just for to take a shortcut outside. <laughs> <laughs> That's about the only reason. Well, how are these compounds set up, you know, the barracks that you had? Now, as I remember, there was five barracks down each side of each compound, see? And then part way down, was that only in one side or both sides, there was a the, uh, latrine, like a, the old outhouse style, you know? Uh-huh. And they had Russian uh, prisoners in there to, with uh, these old sewer pumpers to clean them out now and then. Right. But uh, then at the at the bottom end where the gate was, well, then they had a cookhouse. There's where they they uh, issue our soup, and then every morning you get a cup of hot water, and uh, they make their you get you get a noon meal, and I think at night you get some, or in the morning you got the bread. Anyhow, it's very meager. <coughs> <But> <coughs> It wasn't long till our compound got full, and then they were starting to fill the other compounds. Yeah, pretty fast. They, I guess you know, these older older camps had been pretty well filled for some time. Well, then, uh, along in the middle of the summer, then here come this Robert Hansen, who was our tail, our turret, ball, ball turret gunner. See, he's the one that filled me, and he said that as soon as he, our plane got hit. They saw the smoke and flame, they all built it out. None of them ever called it. Boy, that, I thought, that's pretty damn low down, you know. That really got me. Not one of them guys would take time to give us a call on the intercom that they was bailing out. We didn't know it. The guys in the back? Yeah, all four of them. You got a tail gunner, two waist gunners, <coughs> ball turret. They all bailed out and never said a word. It's Jeez. amazing. Yeah. And oh, Robert Hansen, he, he's a dumb little kid anyway, but he ended up breaking a leg landing. So he was in a German hospital for a while before he came into camp. But uh, he was a simple little guy. Then uh, he's the one that made that uh, cigarette case that I had these uh, 
my diary in, you know. Right. Remember that was a cigarette case? The He's the one that made that. Really? Yeah. He collected all these unwinding bands and made that for me. He gave me, he didn't smoke, he gave me all this. We got our, after being there maybe a month, then the Red Cross finally caught up with us and we started to get them. Red Cross parcel. We'd get, they, they usually, they, they figured on a parcel a week per man. Well, we they cut us to a half a parcel, but that was adequate with the German rations. I felt it was adequate. We picked up morale mainly, because you had uh, you'd get a can of, of clean powdered milk, get a can of corned beef, same style of corned beef they have today, a can of Spam, and a little old round, say an 8 ounce or whatever, it'd be a 10 ounce of liver pate, and then a, a kind of like a package of like dog biscuit crackers, and then a very condensed heavy chocolate bar. And uh, not like your average Hershey bar, it's very heavy ch condensed chocolate. And then, uh, what else was there in a the line of food? And then we'd get usually five packs of <coughs> cigarettes in one of them, so then by getting a half parcel you'd get two and a half packs of cigarettes. And uh, that was your money for like playing poker, your cigarettes. So old Hanson, he gave me all of his cigarettes. And uh, that was about the size of it in them things. That food and the cigarettes. Yeah, that's about it, I guess. But, uh, well, life went on pretty well there. And then at that same time, once we got the parcels, well, then the Red Cross shipped in Musical instruments, books, sporting equipment, 